OK, I think we should kick off. I'm so excited, honestly. I've been so nervous. Is anyone going to turn up to my birthday party? That's how it's felt. So thank you so much. This is such an exciting moment to have our first community call ever. So thank you for joining from time zones all over the world. I wanted to give um, a little bit of background to how this call came to be. So um, something that's happened internally in Microsoft in the last six months is a real effort to focus more on community. We have so many awesome community members across the globe working for in so many different roles. Um, and it was decided, you know, let's let's have a dedicated team in Microsoft who's focused on community. And, and quite a few members of that team have jo joined today. We have myself, Scott, Dwayne, Charles, Vandana, Wim, Ryan, Alistair, might even be a few more who've popped on. So um, and we all have a whole host of roles. And what we're going to do now is there's a few of those roles that are really going to be community facing uh, for these calls. So I wanted to take an opportunity for a few of us to, to introduce ourselves. So I am Lydia Williams and I um, have a background as an ERP seller. I covered ERP. I covered ERP as a marketer as well. Um, and since joining engineering five years ago at Microsoft, I've sort of covered all of the dynamic stack. And I kind of have uh, two roles. I'm a storyteller and a community evangelist. And that covers storytelling covers ERP only, but the community evangelist is across all of dynamics. And one of the exciting opportunities I've been given is, hey, let's go ahead and create a community call that really serves the members of our community. Let's meet with them, bring them all together, find out what would be the most helpful things to do. Um, and let's do it. So that's my current focus. Charles and V, do you want to give a little introduction to yourselves? Why don't you go first? Sounds good. Hi, everybody. I am Vandana Sharma. I also go by V, so you remember that. <clears throat> so I represent customer experience, similar to Lydia. So my responsibility is also storytelling, evangelist. But in addition to that, all of you MVPs out there, you will probably see my face and emails coming through. So I'm also sort of a liaison for you guys. Um, my background, I started my career in Dynamics 365 in the partner channel. On a personal note, I also met my husband in the Dynamics channel. So I'm currently raising a future Dynamics consultant. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Dynamics 365 runs through my veins. Uh, so I'm very excited to finally get some time to engage with the entire community here. Outside of Microsoft, I'm also involved in a nonprofit that helps bring Dynamics 365 and Power Platform career opportunities to people from underserved communities um, called TechFluent. So some of you, if I've engaged with you through TechFluent, hello there as well. So very excited for our first call. Charles, you're next. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I added a poll into the chat and you needed a couple of minutes to put it together. Uh, we just want to get an idea of uh, who is represented on the call. That'll help us in future calls to figure out uh, what content might be best for you based upon uh, your relationship with Microsoft. Anyway, my name is Charles Drayton. Uh, really excited to be here. Uh, like Lydia and Vanina, I have two roles. The first role is I'm a program manager with my focus being on Copilot apps. So if you guys have already heard about the 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 big old Copilot in versus Copilot four, uh, I will cover the Copilot four and uh, we'll talk a lot more about that in the future calls, I'm sure. And my other role here is I'm the uh, community engagement director. So a lot of the things that um, you know we'll be talking about going forward about providing you with the resources that you need to answer questions or to help other people get answers to questions, um, that all rolls up to my team. So uh, you'll be hearing a lot from me as well. And uh, hopefully I will be seeing you all at the uh, Power Platform Conference in September. Awesome, thanks Charles. Um, so as you all know, this is the first Dynamics 365 community call that we have ever run. And what is beautiful about that is we get to mold it together. And what we don't wanna do is make assumptions about what would be helpful. And looking at the poll in the chat, we have a real mix of um, attendees, implementation partners, customers, some Microsoft employees. Um, if you put other, I'd love you to write, what is other? What is your role? What are you doing? Um, 
so what we're going to do now before we get into our first two speakers is we're going to put a few more questions in the chat because we really want to understand what would be helpful. So the first thing that we want to ask is, you know, what do you want to see content wise for these calls? Some options. Um, give me the updates on the latest features. Help me find where to go for support resources. Share best practices and ideas. Give career tips. Tell me about what events are coming up or other things. So Charles, I think you're putting that as a poll in the chat. And I'm going to say something crazy and say if uh, anyone wants to come off mute as well and give their perspective, we'd love this to be a like we're all on, we're all chatting rather than than speaking at you. So um, anyone feeling brave or shall I call out some of the faces that I recognize in the chat to get their perspective? Okay, let's be brave. Um, Julie, I'd love your perspective on what you think would be a helpful call. How did I know I would be picked first? I know. <laughs> first of all, let's say hi to Leo, the office dog. Hi, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've always thought the community really does need to address what the community is needing at the moment. So it's going to be different every time. So maybe a good approach would be to have a regular cadence of some social interaction asking for agenda items for the next call or asking for volunteers for the next call um, and see where the community leads us. It doesn't have to be formal and it could definitely uh, evolve as the group evolves. I love that. That is such a great approach. Thank you. Um, I imagine lots of folks on the on the call agree with that. I want to call out, I don't know, is it Emre or Emra? Um, you put a comment in the chat. Would you mind? Coming off mute and just sharing a little bit more of what you what you mean by that. Don't know if you are still on the call, but if you if you're there, put something in the chat. If not, no worries. OK, so Charles has put that question in the poll. So why don't we all go ahead and answer that now? I will admit I voted for every option. <laughs> that means we're on the right track. Definitely. This is great. This pot it so quickly brings to life how people feel, doesn't it? It's awesome. Go ahead, Julie. Well, and while new features are great, there's lots and lots of resources on that mm. that are very well curated. And yeah. so maybe a few minutes for new stuff, but mm -hmm. then the rest of it focusing on the gaps that we see in our community. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, while everyone's filling in that, um, <clears throat> another question we had is, what challenges are you facing at the moment? Because this is a great opportunity for us to, to knowledge share for specific problems that we're facing. So um, we have some examples for that. Product knowledge, configuration. Are you are you are you struggling to find success stories? Are you struggling to find peers to connect with? Whether that's you're a customer and you want to connect with other customers, or whether you're an MVP or a partner and wanting to connect with other partners, we're going to put that chat um, that as a question in as well. Um, I know that when I attended CAB, which is the Customer Advisory Board, it was. The feedback was so clear, you know, this is such a great opportunity for us to connect with other customers and we don't get to do that so often. So um, I think that's another great opportunity. Seeing some questions in or comments in the chat. Let's have a look at this. So I had a random idea. What if we had some specific product demo of some variety that we curated every call? So like, I have no idea how to use BC but I should have some kind of working knowledge about it. So if mm -hmm. the expert came on and gave us a 10 minute demo of mm -hmm. this is your quick primer on how to use Business Central, then I could at least hold an intelligent conversation about it. Yeah, yeah, that's an awesome suggestion. Um, thank you. Okay, cool. So we've put that in the chat. So if you could um, vote on that and if you have any other comments, um, put those in the chat as well. Yep, Judy, see your hands raised. 
sorry about that. That was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Well, how did you run the spot? I feel like but we're hi. getting... Hi, hi. Where... <laughs> Judy, tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your role? Where are you from? Oh, thank you for that. Um, hmm. Here, let me just put myself on camera too while I'm at that. I am new to the community and I'm very excited about it. And I met Angeliki at the Dynamics User Group at Pacific Northwest. And that's how I got involved in the community thanks to someone as enthusiastic as her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not necessarily new to Dynamics, uh, but I love the product. And I am just overwhelmed trying to keep up, trying to serve our our customers because like all of you and I know we're really passionate about providing the best value mm. to our customers with Dynamics platform because I think it's absolutely phenomenal and um, you guys, you guys meaning the community are amazing and I just can't keep up with you guys. Um, yeah, <laughs> so that's why so I joined today. Good. There's so much and I'm so excited and it's lovely mm. to meet all of you. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Thanks Judy. Awesome. You're welcome. So much wonderful dynamics energy. I love it. Um, okay, so a couple. We have two more questions. I think um, the next one is, who would you most like to hear from on these calls? Because as we know, there's there's such a varied audience. Charles is going to put another poll in the chat. Things that come up: customers, MVPs, engineering at Microsoft, sellers, super users. And as with other, the other polls, you can of course answer um, with multiple answers. But yeah, it's just really helping us frame frame the plan. Awesome, Vivian. That's such a great perspective. We have so much to learn from each other, right? Everyone brings some nuance, whether they've, you know, have this really rich dynamics history or whether they have all this other world experience um, that they're bringing to the table. So yeah, very excited to to hear from all different kinds of people. Okay, that poll's in the chat. If you could answer that, that'd be great. And then the final question, and this is getting a little bit ahead of the game, but I think it's important to understand. So as we know, this is a CRM call. Um, and what I want to understand is, would you rather have one call that covers sales, CI and service or two separate calls? As as folks who are joining this call today, do you tend to cover across all of those or have we got folks here who are really sales and customer insights focused or separately really service focused? I know for me, I have um, background across all of it. Um, uh, interesting. Okay, we're already getting some comments in saying saying keep it together. Awesome. So if we all go ahead and vote, that would be great. You know, that is not what I was expecting. So I'm so glad we've done this poll. I, I think I assumed, you know, let's do do one call. So uh, sorry, do two calls. That's a great question from Vanessa. Um, who could you all put in the chat what industries you're focusing on, whether it's what you're in, whether it's what you're supporting? I have to say, I'm so happy that everyone is so engaged in the chat. Thank you. It just makes such a difference and I feel very excited. Also, wow, we're really covering uh, many different industries, aren't we? This is also super insightful for us storytellers. So we make sure we bring in stories for the industries you work mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> maybe a little bit more context. We're going to move on to our first two speakers in a minute. But just to give you a little bit more con context about uh, Lydia, V and Charles. So we're in product engineering and we cover storytelling and community. So uh, as we said, community is these community calls. It's um, V is focusing on MVP work. Charles also covers community and is focusing. Charles, would you say it's more like focusing on like the support side of it? How would you describe it? Yeah, I think support side of it is a good way to look at it. Yeah, um, and, and I'm focusing on what we're calling 3C, content curation and coordination. And that's why this is across all of Dynamics. So 
we're doing community content. As Charles said, we've done the Demystifying Copilot series on the YouTube and LinkedIn channels. We're creating a number of short form video series to help educate the community. Um, but on the storytelling side of our role, which there's obviously overlap there, right? Because the storytelling in that responsibility, we also cover things like the business applications launch event that comes out twice a year. We're responsible for writing the demos and presentations for that. We often get involved in keynotes at big conferences. So to V's original point, when we're writing that content, when we're creating demos, when we're creating presentations, knowing like, OK, what does our audience want to see? Because the audience is so vast, makes such a difference. So hearing things like this, the industries that you're focusing on is really helpful. OK, so the next part of this agenda, I'm going to hand over to Julie. So to give you a little bit of context, we decided to start the call and some of you may know there's a power platform community call that already exists so um, inspired by them we reached out to some mvps who we were very excited about and asked them if they'd be willing to present and and the question we posed was what do you think would be helpful to share with your peers so julie i'm going to hand over to you for the first section on a certification awesome thank you i am going to share three powerpoints awesome so let's get sharing can you confirm that you can see my powerpoints yeah we can fabulous so um my name is julie yak and i've been an mvp for some time about an hour ago i got notification that i was renewed for my 16th year as mvp so awesome. um, all of us are eagerly keeping an eye on that so we can get those renewal notifications today. Um, but I felt it was important to first off start with what's an exam, what's a certification, because we often use them interchangeably and they're kind of a little bit different. So an exam is a traditional test. You sit down in front of your computer or at a test center and you answer your multiple choice questions. Generally speaking to past the exam you need about a 70 percent score and if you get that 70 percent you have the same certification as the person who got 100 percent so don't beat yourself up over getting a perfect score because you are just as certified as the person who got the perfect score um, but we've got a collection of them there's many for biz apps those are the for the dynamic side which are the MB certification, so the CRM, ERP, BC, and so on. And then we've also got the Power Platform ones, which are the PL, which there's a lot of overlap in the functionality. So in the wild, you'll find a lot of people who have either or both of those in their toolbox. Um, then we have a certification, which is a more like a title. It's the person who um, has taken the exams. It's the title you get after you have taken that exam. So um, if you take the sales certification exam, then you might be a customer experience associate or um, some of them are combinations like the uh, solution architect is a combination of certifications. It's a more advanced um, set of credentials. And then something we're seeing more and more of are applied skills. And these are free options for you to do on Microsoft Learn. And that is where you put your hands on keys and make stuff. And then there's a back end that evaluates did you meet the requirements. And then you get to include that applied skill to your um, portfolio. Now we've got some evolving credentials. We are getting rid of some of the um, product specific certifications at this time. So like, for example, sales is out, um, customer insights data, customer insights journey, those specific certifications are being retired um, as of November of this year. There's going to be a new one, which kind of focuses more on the core. So the customer experience analyst, um, as we all know, there's many similarities between the products. As examples, I mean, this call right here, we've got when everyone was asking about what do we want to focus on, 
we're all interested in all the products because there's a lot of similarities specifically on that CRM side. So why not let the certifications kind of go with that? And then what we'll have after um, that certification, I guess, evolution will be additional applied skills specific to the topics at hand. And so we'll have the core and then we'll have the applied skills. Um, I think what we're going to see in the future is more core certifications along with specialized applied skills. And I think that this is going to be the same for the CRM side, the ERP side, for um, Power Automate, for example. Um, Power Automate is huge. So splitting it up into smaller, more attainable pieces is, I think, the right path to take. Um, I'm happy to entertain questions about any of the different certifications, um, but I think that the evolution of these is a good thing. We've seen the credentials evolve over time for years, um, and it kind of has been trying to keep pace with the product and what we're seeing out in the wild, but certifications take a little bit longer because we want to make sure that they go through the proper procedures and make sure that it's all been vetted, that we're getting the right people to participate in that process and so on. I see a question about, is there any plan to have an exam for success by design? Um, I can't speak about details, but I've participated in some conversations where that has been brought up. Uh, the people who um, have talked about it are well aware that that is a good idea. But I think that the problem with that comes with making sure that um, it follows the same pace as the others. So I'm not sure if we're going to see that in the next year to 18 months, but I know the conversations have been had. Were there other questions that scrolled by while I was talking? I don't think so, but maybe could you just clarify a little bit more about what success by design is for anyone who's less familiar with that? Um, it's a methodology for um, how to, the way I see it is how to red team your project, right? Mm -hmm. How to um, use these established patterns and practices to evaluate your plans. And um, that if you are familiar with success by design going into a project, then you'll have less red teaming necessary on the far end of your project, so to speak. Is cool. that your understanding as well, Lydia? Yeah, it is. Yeah, thank you. It's a good thing for um, architects to deal with. So yeah, um, definitely. that was a conversation we had in contact with an architect. How do we how do we make an architect credential mm -hmm. have the weight of an architect? Yeah, yeah. Right. Thank you. Because an architect is more than just someone who has passed a test. Mm -hmm. And so how do we make that credential mean what it should mean? So I'm sorry I didn't cover 20 minutes, Lydia. Oh, no problem. No, that's <laughs> yeah. helpful. OK. Um, does anyone have specific questions then about um, certifications? Julie is obviously an absolute expert <laughs> in the area. So wondering um, how many folks on the call have completed certifications? How many are planning to renew and do some of the newer certifications that are coming? The um, if you could go back to your previous slide. So this you're saying from November 30th, that's when we're losing the three in red and the green one is coming in. Yes. And yeah. um, this past weekend, I personally updated my sales functional consultants one um, mm. that. So you've taken the certification exam. And that credential is good for 12 months. Hmm. And when it's time for that to roll off, you have the opportunity to take a certification assessment for free on Learn that just covers the net difference from the certification test that you took and the current state of the product. And so I took that personally so that um, I could give uh, keep my credentials current while I let the new certification exam kind of settle and get 
some feedback on it so that I can decide for myself if it's something I'm interested in doing. But that update allows me to keep my MCT profile more current if I have a more current certification attached to it. I'm wondering your perspective on the changes then. <clears throat> have you had much exposure to what the new credential will look like? I have not, um, but I welcome it. I think that um, I was for it when we split them into individual product certifications. And mm -hmm. I'm now that we have such a solid core, I think it's appropriate to focus on the core and then have the applied skills where we can test your abilities. Um, yeah. So a lot of people are really good test takers without studying. They can look at a, a question mm -hmm. and quickly evaluate the wrong answers, the right answers, and so on without necessarily having skills and experience in the products that they're testing on so the applied skills kind of give us that hands-on and mm, so yeah. that combination I think is quite powerful and can help make us better evaluate your portfolio of skills and knowledge yeah definitely and I, I know to your point about some people some people are good test takers some people aren't I find for me using the tool as a learning guide. I know I, years ago I did an ERP certification and I could not pass the test, but I found the learning itself, that was what was helpful for me for my day-to-day -day role, right? So um, yeah, I feel like there's, it's helpful in different ways for different people. Well, and there's no better study guide than the exam itself. So if you get in mm. there and you're on question five and you're like, this is so far beyond what I can do. Mm. Slow down, use all of the time available to you for that exam and read every question, read every answer, read it over and over again as many times as you can in that time frame, so that you have your study guide when you go back to your desk to study for the exam. There's no better study guide. I wonder if you have any other top tips that you would share. Um, we have all failed an exam including myself, I failed an exam that I helped write. <laughs> yeah. So um, we've all failed them in the past. And that as much as I think certifications have a place, I think experience is much more important. And that if you can find a way to get the balance of maybe applied skills is your thing. And so you just get as many of those in your transcript as you can because that's where you shine and then take one exam. So you have that official credential thing in the package for yourself. Mm. But um, yeah, I, re I really mixed feelings on certifications. They are a, a timestamp for a time and place of knowledge. And I think that hands-on experience is much more important and valuable. Yeah, I think that's valid. Um, I, I want to give you an opportunity to also talk a little bit about, um, uh, you know, like share share with the folks the content that you share with people where they can go to to learn from you and access the great content that you produce. Well, well I own a training company, 365.training, and so we've got some free stuff, a lot of paid stuff. We've got paid subscriptions where you can have access to training. Um, we're doing a round of updates on a lot of the content because as we're aware, the platform moves quickly. And so we uh, have to update our content often. These days I'm doing a lot of my um, focus on training cohorts for Ukrainian refugees and um, vulnerable folks who are having to retrain. So they've been uprooted from their home because of a war and now they're an attorney that is in Ireland who's been relocated they can't practice law there so but they have that industry expertise so we're teaching them biz apps and power platform so they can then go out and use that industry knowledge that they came with as well as power platform and dynamics information and skills and hopefully get a new job in their new homes after they've been displaced and so we've been doing we just started a new cohort what is today Wednesday we started a new cohort on Monday and there's 200 and something um, students in that cohort. It's a six week group and hopefully we'll help them find their what's next. Wow, that's in incredibly valuable. Thank you so much for, for putting your efforts into that. And I made a power app that handles all of the translations. So the students mm. are having an experience in 
Ukrainian and my side is in English and it is virtually seamless. Mm, that's amazing. Amazing. Um, there was one question in the chat about, um, are you aware of any exam vouchers available for those interested in taking exams? Um, there's always programs that are happening. There's always skills challenges that are happening. So keep an eye on the LinkedIn groups for Microsoft Learn and other semi-official Microsoft channels, like the one that got you here. And um, keep an eye on those for the different um, programs that they run. You'll find them that happen at conferences, sometimes at the big conferences when you attend it, they'll say 50% off an exam if you take the exam while you're here and so on. So I'm not aware of anything specific that's happening right now, but there's many ongoing programs that happen. Uh, while you're saying that, I am going to point everyone on this call. If you're not following the LinkedIn or the YouTube for the Dynamics 365 community, I'm going to point you to it now. Um, I imagine that's where a lot of you uh, signed up for, but I know that we had some great promotion as well from um, from uh, from speakers from this call. Um, Aaron, that's a great about suggestion. An alternative to Microsoft Learn, and um, it all depends on how you learn. So if you learn best in a classroom with a trainer at the front of the room and a provided environment and hands-on, then yes, there's going to be classroom available for that. If you um, want a guided course with um, with a uh, certificate at the end, my company offers some of those. There's uh, lots of different options. Find some MVPs whose content you love and follow them and see what they're pointing to. I personally love to follow Lisa Crosby. She has a great YouTube channel. She talks about Power Platform. She talks about Dynamics. She is a great resource. And she kind of found herself here by accident like most of us did. And she is very prolific and very giving of her time. So she's a great person to keep an eye on. Thank you. Um, um, video content. Yeah. My company has uh, most of our training is video based with then some hands on labs. Um, there's plural sites. I've got LinkedIn learning courses, which are video based and so on. Awesome. So I think a handful of things were called out there. Julie's own site, uh, Microsoft Learn, following MVPs who are producing an incredible amount of content on, a, on essentially a daily basis. Um, I know that in our team, we have started posting on the Dynamics 365 community, LinkedIn and YouTube. We started creating video content that complements um, learn content as well. So um, yeah, we're really growing. Thank you, Julie. If you have any more questions for Julie, please put them in the chat. Anything else you want to say, Julie, before we hand over to Angeliki? I'm going to throw a link here in the chat. We've got on our site, we call it My Digest. It is a, we've got 200 and some odd community resources that we put on a feed that you can just go and view without having to log in or create yourself a login and get a more curated view. And you can get an email feed of it and so on. And so I'm going to put that link here in chat. And there we go. So you can sign up for my digest and will feed you the sources so that maybe you can then find something that you love. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julie. Such a font of knowledge as always. Um, Angeliki, fire away. Maybe you can start with saying who you are, a little bit about your role and excited sure. for your content. Sure. Um, I have the interest part of the slides anyway, so let me just share. Thank you. So let me know when you can see everything and it's in full screen and all things. It's just loading. Can't see it yet. Oh, there we go. Yep. Yeah. Oh, amazing. <laughs> amazing. Yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Angeliki Pazia. Very, really excited to be here today and to talk about, out of all things, it, I know it's going to be a surprise. It is Copilot. <laughs> Probably no one has heard of it, but it is a little bit of a theme as well. So we got a fantastic beast and where to find them. But in this case, we're going to be looking at sales and how Copilot for sales finds them. 
So uh, since we were saying we should do an intro first, a little bit about me. So my name is Angelique Ipaziavo. I'm based in the UK. And as you may understand, my accent is a little bit odd. I'm originally Greek Italian, but I've been in the UK for the last uh, decade or so. Currently been working for the last few years with Avanade within the business applications practice. And um, also, as of today, a renewed Microsoft MVP in business applications. So super, super excited. I have a bit of a mixed background. So the reason I'm ProSci certified is because before I came into the side of functional consulting and creating amazing applications for users, I was a change manager. So it's always been in my heart the human impact that we have through our um, technology and everything that we build and also how we champion adoption to make the most out of it. Uh, within the Microsoft community, I'm very passionate about this kind of topic. So you'll see me speak and blog. Uh, my blog, empoweredhumans.net, feel free to visit. All of the blog posts are movie themed. So it's pretty fun and geeky, especially if you're into either the movie side or the CRM side. And uh, what else should I say about myself? Yes. So my love language, as cheesy as it sounds, I totally appreciate it, has always been CRM. So since I first started, even though I'm an economist, academically speaking, CRM always was uh, in my day to day as part of work. And I realized the power that it can hold within an organization. So here we are today, uh, 10 years after my first experience with the system with all you. So co-pilot for sales. So what is exciting about it? And this is one of the first quotes that really stayed with me throughout all the content uh, when it comes to this topic is that through that kind of technology, we are making Microsoft 365 speak sales. So it's not a standalone product. It's the better together story that stands out. So what do I mean by that? We know that in tradition, our flow of work, we are working with a lot of Microsoft 365 systems that are helping us stay productive and collaborative. We get Teams, we get Outlook, PowerPoint, uh, Word, and so forth. So all sorts of applications. And by having that magic of Copilot for sales, this is where the better together story comes. So whether you're on the Dynamics 365 or Salesforce side of CRM, by bringing those two together through Copilot for sales, we are bridging the gap between productivity CRM data hygiene and ultimately efficiency when it comes to streamlining the sales pipeline and making sure that we're giving time back to our people to focus on clients rather than admin. This is the efficiency and the magical part of it all. So as we think about all the different functionalities, we've seen a few screens here and there, maybe we've experimented with the product. There's so many use cases about how to use it across the board. So for example, when it comes to Outlook, we could look at different records, let's say an opportunity and look at a summary, which is super helpful, or maybe we want to update the record. And it's in our control what kind of records we are updating because we have the opportunity to look at the standard out of the box tables or maybe our own. When it comes to teams, this is where our collaboration becomes more efficient. We are able to have meetings and then have really insightful analysis of the back of it rather than having to take manual notes on the tasks, on the highlights, and um, attendance, all of these things that were, are actually creating more admin for us. Let's think further. When it comes to sales, you know, you're working with clients, you have to create proposals, whether it's on Word uh, or whether you have to analyze some data and then create a presentation of the back of it. Now, Copilot for Sales can really help you there. You can reference documents or maybe create uh, a proposal based on the style of a document. So you're maintaining your own layout or the client's kind of style. And it's super helpful because ultimately you're able to interact in a way that flows within your style and your time so that you can get that extra productive time back. And of course, you can also interact um, natively and analyze all sorts of data. Now, it doesn't stop there. Another cool part is that we can extend it. So it's not just what out of the box has for us, but also we can bring connectors and other kinds of functionalities. So these are some of the starting ones that came out, but also they keep coming as we go, which is super exciting because we can create more features on top that we extend through Copilot Studio and we can build our own use cases. Ultimately, the power does not come from taking an out of the box product and just using it, but 
taking a step back, understanding what our needs, our business's needs, and our clients' needs, and making sure that it's as bespoke and functional as we need it to be. So with that in mind, let's go into our movie theme that introduces our demo. What are the users for Copilot for Sales and who are we going to hear from today? So inspired from the movie, we are going to look at, first of all, individual sellers. So in this case, and you may be familiar with these names as we go through watch the movie, the first one is individual sellers in the name of Tina Goldstein. So what do we know about individual sellers? They are the kind of people that are on the go. As on their move, they need to be mobile. They don't have much time to do the CRM admin because ultimately they're back to back with client calls or maybe traveling to client sites and they need to close deals. But that's ultimately what, they, uh, what their day-to-day -day task is and also their motivation. So how do we look at using Copilot for sales to make their lives easier and take some of that admin burden back that ultimately creates some hurdles when it comes to data hygiene if things are not done right. The next persona comes in the face of Newt's commander. So in this scenario, he's going to be a sales manager. And what do we know about sales managers? Well, they have two roles, right? So they have also a part in their um, life cycle of sales. They have their own portfolio and they're probably managing bigger accounts, but also they're managing their own people. And that comes with a lot of time constraints because they are so tied up between different sides. So how do we help them manage that balance between more efficient collaboration in-house, but also managing all these bigger client conversations, you know, like Kerbals coming left, right and center from urgencies when it comes to clients, new members that are onboarding and trying to juggle it all. But it also doesn't stop there. There's a whole life cycle, there's a whole um, system of people around them that also support the sales life cycle. So these are our ops people. So sales operations has a big part to play because they take a step back to look at the bigger picture. They will look at the bigger process when it comes to the sales uh, processes that are actually in need of maybe a bit of automation, a bit of innovation to make things smoother. So they will give us a few different ideas that maybe even can help us extend Copilot for sales. They will give us ideas where we can go into Copilot Studio and say, huh, so this is how we can customize and make our, our lives a little bit easier. So they can help the individual sellers and sales managers be even more efficient. Right. So let's go to our demo scenarios and be a bit more specific. The first one, Oh, and before I actually cover this, I just wanted a, a little intro into how I approach this. So when it comes to demos, the way um, that they can really come to life is if we identify scenarios that truly speak to what we face day to day. So I was inspired by scenarios of um, all the different kinds of, let's say, other challenges or time constraints that I've observed. The first one is onboarding. We based people that are either coming or leaving teams day to day. So it's very common to either be someone in, who is just joining the company or supporting the onboarding of someone else. So how can we easily get up to speed and use Outlook to become more efficient through Copilot for sales? That's scenario number one. Scenario number two is again through Outlook, but it's completely different. So instead of looking at individual productivity, we are going to be looking at what happens when, of course, a client comes in last minute with an urgent request and someone like Newt has to tackle that on top of their to-do list and try to turn around a deal that really needs to close urgently, how do we make sure that we are capturing all the right data at the right time and give some time back to him? The third one is also in terms of collaboration, but on teams. So this is the classic scenario where we're inundating with calls back to back and we don't have time to constantly take notes about who's doing what, actions, next steps, who said what, maybe we need to play back a few things, so that means another meeting. No, we're going to look at how we're going to streamline and smoothen out all of that admin by making Copilot for Sales do the work. So with that in mind, I'm going to stop sharing this and we're going to go into the demo.
So let me know when you can see a browser screen. Yep, there we go. Yep. Awesome. Right. So what do we have here? As I promised, the first scenario is the onboarding scenario. So in this case, Tina Goldstein has just joined Contoso. Yes, I know, very famous organization. And she's joining Team Kronos, where Newt's commander is the team lead as a sales manager. Now, Tina was hired for the Italian clients, and uh, her primary language is Italian. So our first task as Newt, and as you can see, we are logged in here as Newt's commander, top right, is to start engaging with her through the multilingual needs of that poses. I don't know about you, but other having worked with multinational teams or multinational clients, that language barrier can be a bit of a struggle sometimes. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to translate to English to make sure that we are getting everything right. Now, Outlook has already identified the language and we can either do the translation natively through Outlook or we can go straight to Cobalt for sale. Let's just get started on that. Fantastic. So as we start interacting with Copilot for Sales, there's a few cool options that we can start engaging with. So there's the infamous, of course, um, draft email. But I want to point you to something first, which is that Tina is an internal user. So when it comes to drafting emails, we're only going to see this button here, this option of draft an email. Remember that because in scenario number two and an external user, we're going to get more options because as you interact with external users, which we assume are clients, then we want to have quicker and faster ways of interacting with them when it comes to replies. Of course, we can save to Dynamics 365, but this is a simple follow up uh, email, so that's not a problem. So let's go ahead. So few options here to draft an email. You can put your custom prompt in, and we'll see that in a moment. But Copilot for Sales also knows that I've interacted with Tina before as Nude. I've held a few meetings with her, actually. So I could also summarize my call with her. So I can choose one of those calls, and I will get a summary. How amazing is this? I don't have to worry about having taken the notes or having to go to whatever chat I did at whatever point in time and finding those highlights from Cobalt for Sales. No worries about that. I can do that. So, for example, if I were to choose this meeting, you'll see a beautiful summary of everything that we discussed or a follow-up items with citations of where that was. Nice, right? But if that's not OK, we can use our filters at the bottom right and we can adjust. Could be the length. Maybe I want to be short and sweet. Could be the tone. Maybe I'm more friendly to begin with or more formal. Could be the language if I want to bring it back to Italian for Tina. Or, of course, add another custom prompt. Now, another thing that I want to show you, if I don't want to go down that path, is what I would do with a custom prompt. So let's put a prompt together. And let's create the draft. So what I want to show you, apart from filters and whatnot, is the use case where, as a user, you may have a prompt that you want to keep using. So in here, first of all, point, Copa for Sales has identified automatically that we got the email in time to begin with, so has gone on and done the translation. But if I want, I can change the language back. Putting that aside, I also have other options. The really cool thing is that I can save my prompts to reuse. So here at the bottom left, you have this little star. If you add to favorites next time, you Copilot for Sales will remind you your favorites in case you want to reuse something, which I find pretty neat. If you were to make a change, for example, um, we can say, oh, I also want to meet up with her in Rome for the next quarterly visit. Let's do that. What happens if I'm experimenting with different prompts, but I want to restore a previous version. No problem. Bottom, you can see there's a few arrows. That's because we can use the arrows to go to previous versions. So if we were to use one of those instead, it's super easy. A few other things to point out that we'll see as an experience across the scenarios is that with the plus button, we can create new records. As an admin, I've configured those. And these are some of the out-of-the-box tables that we're all familiar with. But 
And we can either do it here or go into dynamics, but also if you have custom tables, no problem, configure those as well. And the final thing that is also pretty cool for this scenario and for across them is the global entity search. So that's really helpful because let's say I want to um, start looking for a, an account then that's pretty helpful because I can perform a global search and start looking throughout my uh, records. Now, of course, the demo guides are not kind to me, so let's ignore that. Oh, there we go. There we go. It just took a few seconds. So as you can see, we can find a few different records, but because they span across tables, I can also filter and make this more specific if the list is becoming too much. So that's scenario number one, and this is an easy way to speed up collaboration uh, through any kind of uh, Outlook email needs. Now, the second one is when an external client approaches us. So in this case, we have Geller Grindelwald, another fantastic beast character. So he is a new procurement officer for Northwind Traders, and he wants to close a deal urgently. Now, this is a bit of a curveball for Newt. He's already busy as it is. So if he has to go through these details, figure out exactly where this deal was, how he's going to make this happen internally, bit of a challenge. But let's see what Copal for Sales can do. So let's start interacting with it. Now, the first thing that is really helpful for me, especially if the emails are quite complex, is to start connecting it to the different records. Now, let me point out a few cool things from the June releases. As we can save um, the email to Dynamics 365, we now get uh, two new features. Number one, we can add categories for the email, which you have to enable as an admin first. Now, this is pretty helpful because I can create uh, these tags for this uh, emails, and it's pretty helpful because, for example, as you've seen here, I've already done a few. I can say maybe the tag is based on the account and the type of record that I'm saving, for example, their leads or invoices. And the other way that you could do it, maybe it's around confidentiality. That's another helpful tag. So let's call it uh, for now the account name. And let's call it leads, lead athletes. And I can save uh, the files as well. I can choose all of them, or maybe I don't want all of them. So let's choose my account as well, because that's super important. There we go, and save. Now, as we do that and it tracks the dynamics, we will see how this has saved us both the attachments, we'll get an icon for that, but also the categories. Now, of course, we also want to save this as Gellert is a new contact for us and we want to add that. Now, as we do that, we'll get the uh, some of the content pre-filled. So first and last name and email. Let's add the company. And then let's add who's going to be course, we need to connect that and then the owner. So in this case, let's add myself as um, me. Great. Of course, if you want to add more details, that's not. So a few cool things to note here is you can add private notes. So these are notes that only you will see in Outlook, does not track to dynamics, is not shared. Maybe we can say something around um, now KYC yet because we want to have a reminder that this um, contact needs to be um, verified and go through some due processes. Now, as I've connected, I have some pretty cool things here. I see all the opportunities for Northwind. I see some related items as well. And ultimately, I can edit records if I want, either here or into Dynamics through Deep Linking. And I can also create records. So are there opportunities uh, or contacts, accounts, and so forth? This is all something that your admin needs to enable. And once that happens, then off you go. Another cool June feature that I want to share is recommendations. So imagine there's a long thread and you have to pick apart how to update your CRM record and you don't have as much time. 
Dynamics does this work for you as well. So this is where it will give you recommendations about where to update your opportunity. And then that's pretty helpful, right? Because you can clearly see where your blind spots are. Now, the final thing for this scenario is deal rooms. This is pretty helpful. I see at the bottom all of the deal rooms that could either be creating and the account teams as well, or the ones that I already have. So here, I already have one deep link straight into Teams, which is pretty helpful, or I'm getting a prompt to set one up here, which I can do and then add members as we go. The third scenario that I will show you if we go straight into Teams is where we are making our collaboration more efficient. So in this particular scenario, I already as Newt had a call with Tina. And as you can see here, I've enabled Copilot for sales. Now, this gives me all these cool features that I wanted to share very quickly in the last minute. In the highlights, we can see all the key notes that we'll be taking if we were manually doing this, which is super important with a link to play back where that was mentioned. We also have follow ups, which shows all the actions that need to happen. And I can either create it natively here or if I've already created a task, I can see it because I have a deep link into Dynamics. At the bottom, we have a sentiment analysis, which shows the different kind of people that engage and how um, their interactions were seen. And I can play back if needed. And I see the script here as well. The brand competitor info that you got during the call is also mentioned here with some keywords. And finally, if you're taking attendance, this will also be seen here. So the final thing that I wanted to share before we go is that please remember to enable Copilot for sales during the call as well as transcriptions. And this will help you get all of this fantastic information and help you speed up all of the work that you would be doing to give you time back for clients. So with that in mind, let me just share my final slide, if I may have one more moment. And this is for some pretty helpful resources that can um, get you further when it comes to Copilot for sales. So the first one is Tip Time from Amira and the Fast Track team. So amazing source of information. Maps of Mechanics, most recent Eric Book of the great extensibility video. Then we got the blog, which is really helpful. Apologies, my presentation now has decided to crash. <laughs> um, Training module if you want to go to learn and get yourself more upskilled. Adoption website, everything to help you with pre-designed material to um, get Copal for Sales adopted from all your different personas. And of course, a click-through demo, so you don't have to worry about environments if you want to experience it. Thank you so much for your time today as well. Here are my socials if you want to engage on the left. And of course, there's a blog post covering everything that we saw today in more detail to get you started. So. Thank you so Thank much. You. That was perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you to both you and Julie for awesome presentations. And thank you everyone for being so engaged. I'm honestly thrilled. Our next call is going to be at the beginning of August. The cadence from now onwards will be the first Wednesday of every month. And we didn't do that this week because of uh, this month because of um, 4th of July for our US attendees. But it will be the first Wednesday. If you registered for the call on the website, you should have the reoccurring uh, calendar invitation in your calendar. And if you see in the chat, if you want to present a topic or you want to request a topic, I've put two short aka.ms links in the chat. So thank you very much. We will be promoting the next call and very excited to share more knowledge, join together, and just continue to build out this great community. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.